Hi, thank you so much for coming along and uh, agreeing to be interviewed. Um, we've got a series of 10 questions, and what we're going to do, uh, we're just going to go through those questions, answer them openly, as honestly as you can. Um, and yeah, but first of all, just give us a, a quick hello, who you are and what you do. I am Alex Jarrett, and I'm an actress. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, so, question number one, can you tell us about your journey to where you are today? And what you're currently up to? Yeah, um, well, I started when I was really young. I used to be a child model until I was about seven, I think. I came out of that pretty quickly. Um, and then I started to go to theatre train. So I did performing arts classes, like singing, dancing, and acting, just to try it out. Um, and my mum saw something in me when it came to acting. So she decided to push that one a little bit more. So I did performing arts classes until I was. 12 and then I joined a youth theatre at Stratford East Theatre Royal. I joined the youth theatre there when I was 13 and I got my agent when I was 13 as well through doing a performance at the theatre and I've been professionally working in the industry for about eight, seven years now, seven years um, and yeah I went to the Brit School from 16 to 18, graduated from there and I've just been acting ever since. Um, I've been, recently I was in a show that came out on Channel 4 called Adult Material. I finished filming an Xbox game recently as well. And at the moment I'm just preparing to film a short film, just little jobs here and there, but I've got some things in the pipeline, I hope so, for 2021. But that's, that's it for now. Oh, that's amazing. That sounds really, really good, really positive. Like, you've been busy, you've been busy already at 20 years old. <laughs> um, okay, question number two. What would you say is your favourite thing about your job and why? I think my favourite thing is just the art of becoming somebody else. You know, I think being yourself all the time is pretty boring, you know? I feel like what better thing to do than go and pick up a script, change your costume, get some hair and makeup done and become a completely different person. I think that's the favourite thing of what I do. Sometimes you become a character that you don't necessarily like or there are some barriers between you and that character. It's not always fun characters that you, that you get casted, obviously. We all watch TV. But I think my favourite thing is becoming somebody else and then I can just come out of that when I want to and come home and be Alex again. So, yeah, I think that's my favourite thing. And just a sort of slight little side anecdote from that. Have you got a favourite character that you've ever played? And whether that's in professional, whether that was back in school when you were the lead in the school musical, have you got a favourite role that you've played? Um, <laughs> yes. Oh, there, there are so many. Um, I think the hardest role, but the best role, was when I did a one-woman show at the, um, the Old Red Lion in Angel, I did a one woman show and I became this beautiful girl called Aisha. Um, yeah, very hard story, very harrowing. It was about child marriage in the UK, so it was very, it was a hard character to play, but she taught me so much. She taught me so much as a person, as a young woman, and yeah, that's by far probably the best, I think. Thank you very much. Okay, question number three. Can you tell us about a wow moment in your career? Um, whether it was a, oh my goodness, I absolutely love my job or what on earth am I doing with my life? Just a wow moment for you. <laughs> I've got a lot of wow moments and a lot of wow, why the hell, I can't believe I'm doing this. But I think probably the biggest wow moment is um, when actually, when I was, so when I filmed Les Mis, I had to fly to Belgium and we did filming internationally. That was my first international job. And I was on set with Dominic West and I had a scene with him. And Dominic West is amazing at what he does. He's just so great. And while we was filming a scene, the camera was on me and Adil Akhtar. It was on me and him. And Dominic West was behind the camera and he was like making funny faces and making a joke. And he was making us laugh during the scenes. And that moment I thought, this job is not that serious. It's okay to have a joke. It's okay to have a laugh. But then that's when I was like, wow, I really do love what I do. Just the art of 
laughing at yourself and having fun and then creating something beautiful out of that. It's just, that was, yeah, that was a wow moment. I was like, wow, you guys are allowed to make jokes? I was so like timid and I was so like, oh, you guys are like, they're much, obviously they've done a lot more than me. Their catalogue is much bigger than mine. So I was like a newbie, my first international job. I was like, okay, I must be good. I must do this. I must do that. But then that all broke down when Dominic was just like making jokes and making us laugh. So that was definitely, wow, wow. I love my job. Yeah, I guess because obviously uh, as 99% of the population watch something on the screen, they don't see what goes on behind. But you were there seeing what goes on behind. You've got this incredible actor in front of you, yet in that moment you realise they're a human being. They're normal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like they're just, just some of the things that he said and some of the, the, like the little comments that he made. I was just thinking like, wow, you guys are such great people. But you don't obviously see that all the time. You see them when they're acting and they're serious and they're doing their thing. But when you're there in the moment, you're like, wow, we're all normal people just doing our job. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, so obviously being a, a, young, a young girl growing up in East London, uh, trying to get into a really tough profession, a tough industry, uh, for you, what hurdles did you personally face and how did you overcome them, if any? There's a, there's, a, there's a lot. Obviously, there's not wanting to be typecasted and not wanting to just do gang-related movies and TV shows where you're just this stroppy little teenager because that's how a lot of people perceive us. Like, that's how they, they see a lot of teenagers. And I don't think that's, obvi that's obviously completely wrong. We're all people and we all have our own stories. So I think that's one of them. But I think the biggest one that I had, I think, was being confronted with being so young and having to do having to talk about sex and consent and having to perform things on camera or in front of people in a theater show things that i wouldn't normally be comfortable with but realizing that i i have a character and i have a job to do and i have to do it i took the job and this is something that i've got to do so and it's important that you do that it's important that you tell those stories so yeah, I think just come, confront, coming to terms with when you're acting, the sexual side, sex side of it, when you have to do a sex scene or you have to kiss someone or the art of consent and sexual assault. I think I confronted those quite um, early on in my acting career. So I was like, yeah, this is really hard for my age and for who I am. But yeah. What's one of the best lessons you've learned in life and kind of where did it come from and what was its impact? Um, well, it wasn't really a lesson, but it was something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. I think I was on Les Mis again and I was, um, I was with Olivia Coleman. Absolute queen, legend. She's amazing. Legend. What she does. A legend. Oh. Big legend. I can't believe that I got the privilege to work with her. Um, we was at dinner. We was just chilling at dinner. And I must have said to her, um, you know, what's, what's one thing that you live by? What do you live by? And she said, when I leave my house in the morning, I say to myself, I'm going to make someone smile today. And I'm not allowed to step back into my front door without making someone smile. And then when she said, she said that a few couple of years ago, I did Les Mis a few years ago, but that has stayed with me all this time. And I live by that as well now, because if you can go out, you may be having a terrible, terrible day, but if you can go out and you can make somebody else smile, it makes you feel good. It makes the person feel good and it just makes you feel better as a whole. So that's something that I live by. And for it to come from Olivia Coleman, she's just so down to earth. She's such a wonderful person. So when she said that, I was like, I'm going to take that. I'm going to do that as well. So, yeah, that's something that I've learned. Oh, that's, that's actually, I'm sitting here smiling myself. <laughs> you know what? That, that's great. That's great. And as teachers, hopefully I try and make students smile. But the actual thought process of, no, I want to go out and, and make somebody smile. That's just really nice. And you take that, take that now as a life lesson. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Um, okay. Some slightly, uh, a couple of, different questions which might might throw you off the course but let's see how they go um if you were stuck on a desert island what luxury item would you take with you and why um <laughs> a luxury item okay um 
See, everyone would just really say their phone, but I think I could actually live without my phone. And I would. You don't have a charge point on the desert. Don't have charge point. Exactly, exactly. It's gonna die. It's there's no. What are you gonna do? There's no service out there. I would bring. I think I would bring some hair gel. <laughs> my hair out there is not surviving. My hair's not surviving. So I would definitely bring some hair gel with me so I can tame it because I'm not, I, my hair wouldn't survive out there. Are you, um, so. are you like Monica from Friends when she goes to the <laughs> island and the humidity and the hair just goes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. That is, that is me. As soon as I step off that plane, my hair says, mm -mm, I don't care how much hairspray or hair gel or hair product you put in, I'm going to get bigger. And yeah, it's the hardest thing to tame. So I would bring hair gel. Absolutely. Hair gel to tame the hair. Hair gel, 100%. If you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and why? And is Akala. I think that he is, he is amazing. He wrote a book called The Natives. And I would love to sit down with Akala and pick his brain about the British Empire and what he thinks about black history. And yeah, we're from the same, we're kind of from the same like background. So when I read his book, I felt like he really, he was speaking to me. So I'd love to have dinner with him and just pick his brain. See what he thinks. Nice. Nice. Um, okay, what do you think, uh, this is kind of back to, back to reality now. Uh, not that they, the others aren't reality. <laughs> um, what do you think are the most common reasons for people giving up in your profession? Um, there's many, but I think one of the biggest ones is you get a lot of no's. You get a lot of doors closing. You get a lot of no's before you get your first yes. So I think that, and, I, and now I think, especially in this generation, everything is kind of handed to us. So we don't really, we don't really have to work as hard much anymore. Like everything is accessible. You have the internet, you have books, you have people around you that can help you out. So I think just someone saying no, people will give up straight away and I'll be like, oh, well, that's obviously not for me then. But no, it is, it can be, and it will be, but you're going to get a lot of no's before you get your first yes. And yeah, I had to come to terms with that pretty quickly because I don't like being told no so when I wasn't getting jobs or when I wasn't getting opportunities I was like why am I even doing this why like what this is ridiculous but I, I held it out obviously and I got my yes and I was like well this just feels even greater and all the no's that happened before you don't think about them as much because they're not that important there are no everyone gets told no sometimes and it's just life you have to come to terms with it but I think it's the the no's the opportunities people don't look hard enough for the opportunity to get into the industry or research about it and the opportunities are there you just need to look for them find them network it's a different it's a different ball game than you know becoming a doctor or becoming a lawyer it's still just as important but it's very different it's the art of networking there's not a grade that you can get to become an amazing actor there's not a course that you need to take it's all in the art of networking and speaking to people and the opportunities will just come sliding through. I think that's a really, uh, really valid sort of catch of, of, a, of a response. You can say it's the art of networking. It's so, so important. Um, and I think, like you said, the generation today, quite often young people think that things are handed to them. Uh, things are given to them on a plate. And I'd say in a lot, a lot of aspects it is. Um, but you're 100% you're right, I completely agree. And hopefully anybody watching can kind of take that. You need to connect with people away from a screen you need to connect with people um, and, and keep hold of those contacts because you never know when when you're going to need them and when they come in when they come in handy absolutely absolutely Alex what's something you're not very good at <laughs> um, something I'm not good at I'm not good at singing I can't sing I can't sing to save my life. I really want to learn to sing, but um, I just I can't sing. I can't do, you think, sing. do you think with with the right training, you, there's something in there, and you could be like, you know what, I, I could, I could. No, absolutely. I think definitely if I got the right training. I mean, I'm not completely tone deaf. People have said, oh, you know, if you worked on your voice, you'd be good. But I'm just like, oh. I've always had this battle with my voice, and I've I'm like, I can't, 
can't, I can't sing. I can't sing. And you know, when you're acting, like there's some jobs that will come up that will rise and they'll be like, oh, are you a good singer? Can you sing for us? And you're, and I've had that before and I've just gone, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, can't sing. I think it's just the barrier of me not being able to do it. That's something that I don't take very well. I like to do things instantly and be great at it. And it's impossible. You know, everyone's going to fail sometimes, but I think it's the, it's me knowing that I could fail it. I'm like, no, I can't, I just can't do it. But no, I can't sing, can't sing to save my life. No. Okay, so you're, you're not first up on the karaoke? No, 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 absolutely not. I can, I can rap, if you put on a bit, if you put on a bit of uh, Stormzy or, you know, Jay Huss, I would embarrass everyone around me, but I can't sing, can't sing. Therefore, I'm gonna push you now. Could we see you one day in, uh, in Hamilton? with the rap going <laughs> on in there. <laughs> absolutely not, absolutely not. I can dance, I can dance, but you might have to get a voiceover for my voice. You might have to get someone singing for me because I cannot, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, um, last question. If you could turn back the time, I say the time, five years ago, and talk to your 15 year old self, what would you tell, what would you tell her and why? Um, 15, where was I? I was, I was in year 10. Year 10, yeah. early year 11, doing Jesus, getting prepped for those Jesus E's. Um, yeah, I would definitely go back and say to myself, everything that's happening right now in this time, do not take it seriously. Half of the people around you and half of the things that people say and do, it's not going to be relevant in the next year. It's not even going to be relevant in the next week. So don't take things too serious. I think I was, when I was going through GCSEs, I was, um, I was going through a lot, like just obviously mentally, I feel like everyone kind of was whenever they did their GCSEs and everyone was like, oh, it's so serious. And you have to have a backup. You have to, you know, if you don't make it, I was told that a lot. I was, I was told, oh, you know, you need to have a backup. What do you want to do? What's your backup? Think of something to do. And I didn't have a backup because I didn't want a backup. My initial plan, I want to be an actress and that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I think if I could go back, I would say, don't give up, even though I think that's a very generic one. That's a very, yeah, don't give up. But honestly, like keep pushing, just keep pushing. You're gonna break something. You're gonna break through some mold if you just keep pushing. So the art of keeping going, I think, is what I would tell myself. Don't take yourself too seriously as well. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Sorry, my mum's just decided to FaceTime me as we're doing this call. <laughs> there she is. She can go. <laughs> um, thank you so, so much for, for your interview and for your time. Um, looking forward to seeing you on our screen soon. And also when things calm down, eventually getting you back into school and giving the speech in person uh, to some of our lovely students. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you.